Hi everyone, greetings for you again in our weekly Money Logic show. Here we go with our Iron Man, sharing our own uh, experience and ideas how to reach financial freedom uh, easy and uh, uh, more f quicker. Uh, so, if you are interested in these topics, uh, just watch our show and uh, we'll be talking about the topics which can help you. By the way, I don't know how it's uh, the weather in your country, but in our country now, the weather is really snowing badly and I don't know how I will be able to get back to my home from my office after the show is finished. Uh, anyway, I wish you uh, good luck in the level where you are living now. And today's topic we would like to discuss with follow is also related to some emotions which can sometimes uh, be uh, started, initiated by watching through a window, but sometimes also related to money. And I would say that money and emotions are really closely connected things and uh, we always are emotional when uh, making some financial decisions, uh, which can also be good and also can be bad. So, Val, what are your thoughts about emotions and money? Yeah, good morning. I think uh, emotions are and money are very directly connected. And I would say even, you know, more widely is that our emotions and our intelligence are connected with each other. Because usually what happens is that when our emotions um, uh, go up, then our intelligence goes down and, and it really works the same way with, uh, with money as well. And, uh, and I think if you can't really control your emotions, then you can't control your money. So it's really, you know, becoming smart emotionally first, you know, growing and building your emotion like you uh, before you can grow your financial like you. So I think it's really the foundation of uh, having success and, and not maybe, you know, getting too greedy in the, in the financial world. Yeah, so what's your what, you, what you what you also mentioned this is basically yeah. understanding your own inner emotions what do you feel in a certain uh, situation what do you feel and uh, how these emotions basically influence your decisions and uh, you also already mentioned one of the emotions being greedy yeah? so the greed emotions what are the other emotions basically which is probably the most uh, popular one uh, to influence the decisions uh, regarding money yeah, I think there are two basic emotions. One is uh, greed and the other is fear and, and neither of them is good. But actually you should know when to use, you know, which emotion. Because uh, especially when you have, you know, uh, bull markets or uh, like fast bull markets or, or quick bear markets happening, then, you know, really if every, everything is going down, then it feels like, okay, I have to get out quickly. But usually that's where the opportunities are. And, and if you don't, you know, control your emotions, then you might uh, miss actually some of the best buying opportunities in history. So yeah, it it's really, you know, it's really hard. But uh, yeah. but if you're intentional about it, it will help you. Yeah, and basically, uh, bull and uh, beer markets are probably the best examples of it because usually we can see a lot of people becoming greedy when it is actually the time to become uh, fearful. And opposite, when it's the time to become greedy, everyone is fearful because this is actually how the market works. Uh, yeah. Like uh, Robert was uh, teaching us in one of uh, his trainings that basically it's really important uh, if you play golf, which golf, golf club you take uh, at which time. Yeah, Because if you take the wrong one, you can hit the ball not to the right distance and the right uh, direction. So with money, it's the same. And uh, actually, because uh, emotions uh, are so important, even the salesmen always understand this and they also play with your emotion just look to the markets look to the to the shops uh, everything is uh, based on your emotions the sales uh, discounts uh, some emotional things uh, near the cashier it's all th all things here because uh, uh, those people understand how emotion works so if you understand the same you can also control your emotions and make more uh, uh, correct decisions regarding the money and the managing of money and also regarding the investing of money not only basing on uh, some uh, sayings from your neighbors that it's the right time to invest to something now, but basing on your own understanding. That's why this emotional EQ, like Paolo said, is uh, very important and is a part of your financial EQ as well. Yeah, and I, I would say, especially now when we have like really, you know, bull markets going on almost everywhere, I think this term of uh, FOMO is really becoming popular or fear of missing out. And it really you know, comes down to your emotions because uh, there's a lot of people with a fear of missing out are actually buying you know, stocks every day which are overvalued. And now eventually when the bubble bursts and everybody's surprised, but they don't realize that they just made not calculated decision based on fundamentals, but they made a decision based on emotions. And it exactly. can be really 
sometimes. Just recently, I was reading one article and I liked it very much. Uh, it was saying that uh, during this uh, last decade, basically a new uh, type of investors grew up. Uh, this is young people who are basically investing through uh, Robin Hood and all these uh, other things. And if you look to them, they even don't uh, understand how uh, the market can go down because it was always going up, almost. Uh, the growth, uh, basically two digits, uh, not even a year, sometimes it's a few months. And uh, for them, if you say that uh, basically the market can uh, have like a 9% or 12% uh, return on investment from the shares, they don't understand because for them it's well only like a 30 20% in two months or three months and this is actually also the emotions which uh, brings them to the position that if something happens with the market which can happen occasionally basically we will uh, have a very bad uh, result on them that's why building wealth and this is actually the term which we would like to present you in our starfish vocabulary part is also starts with emotion because wealth building is a process which starts with understanding your emotions, understanding your patterns, and also behavior around money. So it starts, first of all, with positive emotions uh, regarding the decisions which you make. Uh, also, it uh, starts with your confidence. What uh, are you willing to do with your money and what are your goals? And, of course, uh, also you need to have a positive financial behavior. So this is actually understanding how the money works and how you need to manage your money in order to get the better financial financial outcome. Only then you can create wealth and the next step after you create a wealth of course is wealth preservation, wealth management which you can transfer to your children or maybe some, some of other people. So if you don't have the first two levels as a foundation, uh, understanding of your financial behaviors, understanding of your emotions and the patterns, it will be much harder for you to build a really sustainable wealth in the future. Yeah, I think it, uh, this picture really well describes what we just discussed is that let's say if you have a motion of greed then your behavior will be greedy and it can really backfire you and the same is with fear i mean both are are bad and if you're too fearful and you don't take any action then you also you know lose the opportunity so so it's really you know realizing you know what is the general uh, emotion of the of the marketplace and in a way, you have to kind of go a bit against the market feeling. So if everybody's greedy, then maybe it's time to be a more a bit fearful and, and the opposite way. So it's really the, when the, uh, in the buying is when the opportunities lie. And, and usually it's in the opposite direction where the general market is going. Exactly. So if we talk about this managing uh, of emotions and importance of it, uh, what do you think uh, would be the first steps for people to be able better to manage their emotions or even maybe to understand, uh, understand what emotions control their decision in a certain uh, situation? I, I believe that the education and the knowledge is really a big part of it because uh, you know, if you know what you're doing, then you become less fearful, you're more in control. And, and actually, you know, risk is basically lack of control. And, and, and you can be in risk if you're like too emotional uh, in some, sometimes. But as you become more financially educated, you understand the markets. You also understand that, you know, you know 300 or 900% growth per year is not sustainable. That it's not because the world has changed and we are now in the, you know, info technology age, but the fundamentals will always be the same. So, so eventually the you know 10 15 20 percent return per year is still a good return i don't think these fundamentals has changed but if you look at the market for the last 12 months it looks like you know we are in a new place where everything goes up hundreds of percent every year so that's the you know the challenging part here I would add also that understanding yourself your personality would help because uh, this allow you to uh, this allows you to understand which asset classes is uh, better for you to, to choose to, to, to invest. Because, for example, if you are emotional, one like you mentioned, it will be hard for you to control your emotions when you see the uh, stock uh, market, uh, let's say, graph and trend going up and down, up and down, up and down. Sometimes it can uh, bring you a heart stroke, you know, <laughs> and sometimes you can be like a really, really happy about it. So uh, for this uh, type of people, it's better to choose the ways uh, which are not so 
active uh, in participation of investing. Let's say even if we choose to invest in paper assets, uh, then the strategies we choose should be much more passive. Let's say maybe reviewing their portfolio once a year or something like this, or giving it out to control to somebody else. But for this, you also need to have much higher financial IQ in order to choose the right advisor. Because if you don't have the right advisor, uh, the advice which is given by the person can be useful not for you, but for him, which is quite quite often happens in, in, in the banks and everywhere where people just go in order to get the advice, but don't understand the uh, advice uh, itself. And uh, one more thing I would add also, which can help you to control and uh, understand a more broader picture, is being in the right environment. Because uh, all of us are basically uh, part of the masses, and there is even like a certain uh, specific uh, part of psychology called mass psychology, and we behave as, as, as masses everywhere. And uh, that's why basically it's very hard to control your emotions if you see that everyone is investing, let's say, to crypto. So you always uh, are willing to invest there also, but if you are in the right environment where people are uh, heading the same direction and they basically are interested in the same things and there are more experienced people in the same environment, they can help you to see these things from a bit different perspective and also to control your emotions better because you can see what more experienced people do, not only your neighbors, your friends, uh, which uh, quite often are not uh, the persons you need to follow. Yeah, and I think it also depends on you know, what level you are financially and how much capital do you have because it's, it's really easy to get uh, you know, confused with the news that let's say somebody <clears throat> you know, put 100 million to cryptocurrency and then you think, okay, I will now bet all my capital there. But they don't realize that maybe this company who put 100 million there just put like 1% of their, their whole uh, uh, capital there but you are putting let's say 50 percent so you are like a much riskier situation so even in these poor markets i think it's you know smart to stay in the market but it's just a level of risk you're willing to take and and uh, and you're not betting everything on you know one card that now everything will go up forever so that's the that's the challenge exactly so three things which we mentioned uh, to those who want to control your emotions uh, better first of all understanding of your own personality type uh, putting your time towards financial education in order to uh, get better understanding about the markets, about how the market works. And the uh, third one is uh, surrounding yourself with the uh, right environment where, where you could have people which are more experienced and they basically could uh, help you to understand the situation uh, from a different perspective. And of course, uh, then just taking action in order to be in the market, not only observe, because if you observe, the emotions are not so strong when you are in the market. It's the same like if you, let's say, try to invest in uh, stocks with virtual money, and then you say, I got like a 50% gain, and uh, now I will do the same with real money, and you have loss because the emotions are totally different. So, by the way, mm -hmm. yeah, you want to add something? Yeah, I just add to your uh, comments, maybe just one rule or golden rule, which would be, you know, invest only in the investments that you understand. Mm -hmm. Because right now I feel there's a lot of people investing to investments they don't understand. And that's why, you know, you need the financial education. And at the same time, you know, it's really hard to, you know, be a specialist in all of the asset classes and all the different instruments in, in different asset classes. So you better make a decision, you know, maybe pick a few which you like and then become really smart and then you know what you're doing and then you're in control and you can also control your emotions. Indeed, indeed. I totally agree with it. By the way, those who watch our show, you can always uh, write a questions uh, for us below the video or just in the comments below the video and we will be more than happy to answer the questions in the same show or the upcoming shows. As well, uh, in the same place, you can suggest the topics you want us to include in the upcoming shows, which would be valuable for you. So just feel free to comment below the video and we will plan uh, to answer the questions and to include the topics in the future shows. And the previous shows you always can find in any channels so where you can find Starfish Academy so it's uh, YouTube, Instagram, and also Starfish Academy Facebook page. Just follow the channel which you like the most. And you can watch not only Money Logic shows here, but some other content we put uh, for those who are interested in personal finances, investing, entrepreneurships, and all what is connected to reaching a financial freedom faster and easier. So thank you for watching our show. Thank you all also for your time again to, to share your thoughts about it. And if you like the show, just share it with, uh, this uh, show with your friends and uh, follow us on uh, channels which I mentioned. And uh, be there the next uh, week, same time, to watch our next upcoming live show. Bye-bye. Have a great week. Bye-bye.